Hello students, welcome to the third and last session of your chapter 17 of your first PUC NCRT that is breathing and exchange of gases. In the first two session, we did discuss regarding the human respiratory system, how the human respiratory system works, where exactly the exchange of gases takes place. And we have in detail studied about how the exchange of gases takes place, what are the particular gases or factors which are responsible for exchange of gases. We had also discussed about atmospheric pressure or pressure gradient created by the respiratory system as well as the atmosphere so that there is proper exchange of gases between the respiratory system as well as the atmosphere. We had also discussed regarding transport of gases and we have covered about transport of oxygen. How oxyhemoglobin association is produced, what is the reason for their dissociation and what are the factors responsible for transport of this oxygen. So in today's class, we will continue the transport of gases, but here what we are going to study is transport of carbon dioxide. When it comes to transport of carbon dioxide, transport of carbon dioxide also takes place based on three different components. That is in association with RBC, in the dissolved form in plasma and another is in bicarbonate forms. Transport of carbon dioxide more formal agate one in association with RBC that will be somewhere around 20 to 25 percent or 27 percent and plasma that will be around 7 percent and bicarbonate which will be almost about 70 percent. So carbon dioxide can be transported in any of this forms whereas when it comes to RBC here when the carbon dioxide associates with the RBC, they form carbamino hemoglobin. It is carbamino hemoglobin is formed when the RBC is associated with carbon dioxide. The factor responsible for this association will be partial pressure of carbon dioxide and partial pressure of oxygen. When the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is more and partial pressure of oxygen is less, it leads to association. And when the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is less, and partial pressure of oxygen is more, it leads to dissociation. So here partial pressure of carbon dioxide more, partial pressure of oxygen less leads to association. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide low and partial pressure of oxygen is more, it leads to dissociation. Association in the head of the, it is formation of carbamino hemoglobin and dissociation means it will be hemoglobin will be separated from the carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide also will be separated from the hemoglobin. So when does this association and dissociation takes place? E association illa near cells and dissociation takes place near the alveoli through blood especially through RBCs when the oxygen is carried in the deoxygenated blood and whenever it reaches a cell what happens the cell will give out the carbon dioxide in exchange for oxygen. So the carbon dioxide now should associate with the RBC for which the partial pressure of carbon dioxide should be more and oxygen should be less. Oxygenated blood daily RBC oxygen and the carbon dioxide ge exchange maadadhi koskara cell galatra bandhaga cell alli metabolic activity in the carbon dioxide jaasthi irutte oxygen kammi irutte RBC in the oxygen anna cell ge transfer maadu vantadhu cell in the carbon dioxide anna RBC ge transfer maadu vantadhu e process anna association anta karitivi which takes place in the cells next one when it comes to dissociation the same blood, oxygenated blood, carbon dioxide, 
ಡಿಆಕ್ಸಿಜನೇಟೆಡ್ ಆಗಿ ಕನ್ವರ್ಟ್ ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಈ ಡಿಆಕ್ಸಿಜನೇಟೆಡ್ ಬ್ಲಡ್ ವಾಪಸ್ ಲಂಗ್ಗೆ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ವೆನ್ ಇಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಲಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಗಾಳಿ ಎಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಡೈಆಕ್ಸೈಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪಿರೇಷನ್ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ಬಾಡಿಯ ಹೊರಗಡೆ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ ಆಗಬೇಕು ಅದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಏನಾಗತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ್ರೆ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಡೈಆಕ್ಸೈಡ್ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಆರ್ ಪಿ ಸಿ ನೌ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ವೇರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಪಾರ್ಷಲ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಡೈಆಕ್ಸೈಡ್ ಪಾರ್ಷಲ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಡ್ರಾಪ್ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಆಕ್ಸಿಜನ್ ಪಾರ್ಷಲ್ ಪ್ರೆಷರ್ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ವಿಚ್ ಲೀಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ದ ಸಪರೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಡೈಆಕ್ಸೈಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆರ್ ಬಿ ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಆಲ್ವಿಯೋಲೆ ದ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಡೈಆಕ್ಸೈಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಅಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಕ್ಸಿಜನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಆಲ್ವಿಯೋಲೆ ಇಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ಡ್ ಟು ದ ಆರ್ ಪಿ ಸಿ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹೌ ಎಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಎಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ನಿಯರ್ ದ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ನಿಯರ್ ದ ಆಲ್ವಿಯೋಲೆ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಕಾರ್ಬಮೈನೋ ಹೀಮೋಗ್ಲೋಬಿನ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ the transport of carbon dioxide in its bicarbonate form that happens because of a enzyme called carbonic anhydrase this carbonic anhydrase is present in large amount in rbc when compared to plasma so here these carbonic anhydrase enzyme acts upon carbon dioxide and water to form bicarbonates so that they can easily be transferred within the body and the reaction for this will be so carbon dioxide plus water associates in the presence of carbonic anhydrase enzyme to form h2co3 plus the same thing in the presence of the same enzyme splits into hco3 minus plus h plus so this is a reversible reaction which takes place for either association purpose or dissociation when it is associated in the cells they help in formation of this bicarbonates when they are near the alveoli and it should get dissociated the reverse reaction takes place and water and carbon dioxide gets separated this is how the carbon dioxide transportation takes place within the body so in together if you take 100 ml of deoxygenated blood 100 ml of deoxygenated blood so it can produce or it can give about 4 ml of carbon dioxide so that is how you can transport the carbon dioxide once again to discuss carbon dioxide can be transported in three different forms either through rbcs through plasma as well as bicarbonate forms when it comes to rbc it associates with the hemoglobin forming carbamino hemoglobin and this association is dependent on two main factors which will be partial pressure of carbon dioxide and partial pressure of oxygen higher the partial pressure of carbon dioxide more will be the association lesser the partial pressure of carbon dioxide lesser will be the association and it leads to dissociation association takes place near the cell where there is exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide and dissociation takes place near the alveoli so that the carbon dioxide is expired out of the body RBC also have carbonic anhydrase enzyme which helps in formation of this bicarbonates when the carbon dioxide associates with the water in the presence of the carbonic anhydrase enzyme to form bicarbonates this association takes place near the cells and the same reaction which is taking place in a reverse direction when it is necessary for dissociation and in together carbon dioxide present in 100 ml of blood will be almost about 4 ml so that is about transport of carbon dioxide next we have to study about regulation of this respiration process
normally all the vital organ control that is except circulation your nervous system locomotion and movement as well as respiration excretion everything is controlled by the brain so in the brain there is a region called medulla oblongata which has a particular region in this medulla oblongata called respiratory rhythm center this respiratory center or respiratory rhythm center is present in the medulla oblongata region and whose function is to control the respiratory rhythms it helps in controlling or managing the respiratory rhythms one more region is pons which is also a part of brain in this pons there is a region called pneumotaxic region this pneumotaxic region helps in controlling the function of the respiratory rhythms this medulla oblongata region has a region called respiratory rhythm center which controls the respiratory rhythms whereas pons of the brain which has a region called pneumotaxic region which controls the function of respiratory rhythms both in together they help in regulating the respiratory rate this also both of them also helps in managing the respiratory rate one more region which is called chemo sensitive area which is present in alternate region with the respiratory rhythm center this helps in triggering the respiratory rhythm center and alters the respiration rate for example idhen madutte anta heladre when you move fast when you run when you climb stairs or do any work very quickly this respiratory rhythm will be altered because it takes large amount of oxygen for doing that particular work that is why here chemo sensitive region which is present in the region which is alternate to respiratory rhythm center helps in altering the respiratory rhythms and in turn manages or triggers the respiratory rate in turn alters the respiratory rate either increases the respiration or decreases the respiration so that is how regulation of respiration takes place once again to discuss regulation of respiration aguvantadu brain regionally in the brain it contains a area called medulla oblongata this medulla oblongata has a region called respiratory rhythm center which controls the respiratory rhythms what is a respiratory rhythm it is inspiration as well as expiration when it comes to one more region in the brain which is called pons in pons it has a pneumotaxic region which controls the functioning of this respiratory rhythms either to have forcible inspiration forcible expiration normal inspiration normal expiration all this is controlled by the pons pneumotaxic region one more region which is present adjacent to this respiratory rhythm center that is called chemo sensitive area or region this helps in altering or it triggers the respiratory rhythm so in to alter the rate of respiration and here this chemo sensitive region activity it is completely dependent on either the carbon dioxide and hydrogen ions it is dependent purely on carbon dioxide as well as hydrogen ions so that is about different types of regulatory methods in case of respiration next we'll have to study about some of the disorders the disorders which can be seen in respiration will be first one is asthma asthma 
asthma means it is difficulty in breathing which leads to wheezing problem due to inflammation. Inflammation and the Ud Koduantadu in the bronchioles in the bronchus as well as in the bronchioles. Bronchus is the main branch which is separated from the trachea, which contains of primary, secondary, and tertiary. This further branches of this tertiary bronchus is called bronchioles. Due to the inflammation in these respiratory parts, you can find difficulty in breathing which leads to wheezing problems. That is about asthma. Next one is emphysema. When it comes to emphysema, this is a respiratory disorder due to block in the alveoli. Alveoli is the region where there will be exchange of gases. This blocks the region in the alveoli due to which there will be improper exchange of gases which lead to breathing disabilities. This is mainly caused because of smoking, cigarette smoking madadrinda due to deposition of the nicotine that is the chemical which is present in the cigarette due to deposition of this nicotine in the alveoli where there is exchange of gases. It does not allow the exchange of gases as free as a non-smoker which leads to breathing problem and that is a common disorder which can be seen nowadays which is called amphysema. And the last one is occupational respiratory disorder. When it comes to occupational respiratory disorder, so this occupational respiratory disorder will be here those workers who are associated with dust like construction work, road work or factories, woodwork all these will be subjected to continuous dust. So this dust which cannot be removed by our immune system, our immune system fails to act on this dust. So what happens is if the person is exposed to this dust or dirt continuously or regularly it leads to respiratory problems. The only solution for this is protective masks and staying away from the dust will be the prevention for this particular occupational respiratory disorder. So that is all about different types of disorder which is associated with respiratory system. So it will be asthma where breathing difficulty will be there due to inflammation in the bronchus and bronchioles. When it comes to emphysema, here it is blockage in the alveoli which leads to difficulty in breathing and improper exchange of gases. And the last one will be occupational respiratory disorder. This is due to the continuous exposure of a particular worker who is working in industries like construction industry or woodwork industry or roadwork industries. So what will happen is they will be continuously exposed to this dust which might damage the respiratory system and finally leads to respiratory disorders. So that is all in this particular chapter breathing and exchange of gases. I hope you have understood the concept clearly. Thank you.